Hey everyone, welcome back. Today what I have in this bag is Slumber House back. Please let me preface the house before we get into the fragrance. By the way, I have not smelled this yet. Slumber House is uh, owned and created by Josh Lab, a perfumer. He was in a rock band. Allegedly, how he gets inspiration for his fragrances is <laughs> Shroom walks in the woods and doesn't come back until his uh, idea or inspiration is found. Set the lab on fire like twice. It's exploded once. Things get delayed, discontinued for years and years. I mean, absolutely crazy, but captivating, innovative smells. <laughs> just, I am so excited to try this. They're very expensive, but are just unlike anything else by the wackiest perfumer in the game, um, in, in the wackiest lab in the world that's exploded like two or three times. So anyways, here we go. I've ordered this. Apparently, in typical Slumber House fashion, they've run out of the actual metal caps. So now they just have these uh, silicone little caps here. As you can see back, it's hard to see. It's very um, diluted, but I'm not diluted. It's just hard to read the words. It's, it's faint. Um, but wow, look at this juice. This is ambery. This is brown. What are the notes in here? We've got tobacco, apricot, ambergris, vanilla, wood, and artemisia. Artemisia, that's um, the wormwood ingredient in Nasamato Absinthe. That's really interesting. But yeah, we have a tobacco-y, sweet, fruity fragrance. All right, we're trying this for the first time. <laughs> I can't believe here's our little cap. So we're gonna spray this on the skin. Here we go. It's a good-looking sprayer. Here we go. As you can see, it hasn't been sprayed. I gotta pump it a couple times. Oop. Okay, here we go. Gonna let it air out for a second. Wow. Wow. I've just never smelled anything like this. I can get the apricot, I can get the tobacco. Oh, it's such a rich, it's like a rich, ripe apricot. It's like, it's been sitting out, but it's still juicy. So it's sun, it's sun baked, sun cooked, but it's still just, it has its juice in it. It still has its flavor. It's not quite a, a browned little crisp. I can smell the ambergris. Ambergris kind of has that, at least to my nose, kind of a salty saline smell to it. Of course, the tobacco's there. Um, it's a, I don't know if it's the apricot um, sweetening the tobacco or playing tricks on me, but the tobacco uh, is a sweeter tobacco. It's not a green tobacco. It's uh, more of a smoky browner tobacco, so it's not like a fresh cut leaf. Fascinating. I can get the vanilla in there, that with the apricot sweetness. Of course the woods. I'm seeing if I can pick up that artemisia. It kind of gives it like an herbal greenness, so I can kind of see it in there. Um, for Granica, the assessment is it's, it's, it's at the lowest, the least recognized ingredient, but not a lot of people know what artemisia smells like. So now the tobacco is coming out more. Um, the apricot's coming back some. Back, back some. Wow, it's really good. I mean, this is like um, this is like a, a totally different spin on tobacco vini. I've smelled tobacco vini before. It's it has similarities. Um, whereas the tobacco vini obviously has vanilla. This has vanilla in it too, but it's it's in the back. Really, what's at play is this apricot. Um, tobacco tango going on. Really good. It's intoxicating, really. It smells like a really high-end um, cocktail that you'd find at like a bar or something, just really expensive. That's kind of what I, it's like an expensive, being in a bar and ordering an expensive cocktail, just like a fruity cocktail. Someone likened this to stirring a Manhattan at a smoke bar, and I can see that. Really good, it's boozy. The apricot with the tobacco kind of gives it this boozy element. So it's not just tobacco. Um, I think it creates this kind of uh, spiced, I, I don't want to say rum or whiskey, but this is like a darker liquor, a darker booze. Really good, it's, it's, it's this boozy tobacco. I mean, honestly, I've smelled Mesa Margiela Jazz Club before. This is what Jazz Club wishes it was. Really, I mean, I, I smelled Jazz Club and I understood what they were going for. This, Jazz Club wishes they could be back. Man, that's really good. 
Definitely unisex. The tobacco is a masculine tobacco to my nose. Um, I don't want to say it's a rougher, harsher tobacco, um, but it's, uh, uh, it, it's harder, it's stronger, it's more pungent. That's the word I'm looking for. It's a more pungent tobacco, but it's very approachable. This is um, surprisingly not an extremely challenging fragrance. This is not a very challenging fragrance. Um, I wouldn't say it's an easy wear for anybody, but if you're familiar with tobacco, you like tobacco fragrances, this is really good. And if you like Jazz Club, you kind of like a smoky, boozier fragrance, this is really good. I am really happy with this purchase. It is, I mean, it's intoxicating. I can't stop putting my, this isn't me just trying to like, like it's, I can't, I'm not embellishing. I'm really like, I love the smell of this. Wow, that's really good. The ambergris, it really gives it this refinement. Um, I said it, it, to my nose, it's kind of a, a marine sort of note. Because, I mean, it does come from whale bowels, doesn't it? So, of course, it's a little marine. But it kind of gives it this uh, richness. It, it, I think it enhances the richness of uh, what the other main notes are doing. It's a really good supporting actor. Really good. This is a, this is a warm weather smell. I'm not warm, excuse me, a cold weather smell. This is a fall, winter for sure. I would not wear this in the uh, summer. Could You could wear it in the spring. This could be a cool spring day fragrance. Really good that that I can, because I'm used, to, I'm, I'm trained from Nasamato Absinthe, I'm picking up that Artemisia note, that green note, because I, I know what to look for now. And I guess that's why not a lot of people recognize it because they weren't, their nose wasn't quite sure what to look for. They hadn't smelled it before, but I can definitely pick it up in this, that little, that little tiny tweak that was an absinthe. And it kind of gives it this uh, green spicy kick. And um, it's a powerful green note. It, in itself, not in this fragrance. In this fragrance, it's not strong at all. Really good. I mean, um, this, if you had something like this, it, this would be redundant if you had tobacco vini in your collection. If you had this, you wouldn't need tobacco vini in your collection. I'm just using tobacco vini as just a baseline, kind of a benchmark for like a sweet tobacco that could be somewhat interpreted, uh, interpreted as boozy. I wouldn't call tobacco vini explicitly boozy though. But like a fruity tobacco sweet, like this is fruity. Man, that apricot is so good. I've never smelled apricot in a fragrance before. It's really strange. And that's, I guess, what kind of gives it that booziness uh, with the tobacco. It kind of, that hybrid gives it that boozy kick. Really good. Really, really, folks. This is, I'm, Norn gets all the the hype in Slumber House. So does Kiste. Um, you don't hear a whole lot about back, but this is absolutely fantastic. I think back is very approachable. It is not challenging. Um, I would, it, I haven't smelled Norn and Kisa yet. I have samples of them, so I'm going to get to them soon. I'm going to put it back in uh, old Josh's package, <laughs> the pouch, and uh, I'm going to put it up for now. I got to get back to work soon, so I can't uh, keep smelling and reviewing this all day, but really good. It's, it's super good. I'm excited to have it uh, with me in my arsenal for the winter. Until next time, guys.